guys, I've just been packing my art journaling supplies to take with me on summer vacation and I wanted to show you uh, quickly what I'm taking with me so you can feel inspired to do your own little travel kit if you like. So here are my main art journals and as you can see they are very big they are a4 in size and so this is too big to take with me many years i have taken a journal like this with me but uh, i've realized that it takes up a lot of space and the pages are um, really large and so i cannot complete one during uh, a vacation just a, a week away where i will have just a few moments to myself to create so this year I want to do something a little smaller and simpler and I will be back to those journals when I get back to the studio with renewed inspiration after the vacation. So what I want to show you today is this little pouch and everything fits in there. I love how pretty this one is and I know that some of you are going to ask me where I got it. So sorry, but it was a freebie from um, a skincare brand. So I cannot tell you where to go and buy that, but I love that it has a little reminder and that could be a good idea to, you know, find a container for your art supplies and just uh, write something on it, just to remind you to get playing and creating in your journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take out everything that's in there and then I'm going to show you what it is while I'm putting it back. Let's do this. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, of course, is the journal. And this is an A5 journal. It's half the size of my main journals. And when I open it, this still gives me an A4 spread, of course. So it is still a good size. I have lots to share about this little journal, but for today, I'm just going to show you uh, one or two pages. So this is what I call my junkified journal. It's really a, a regular journal, but I've given it the look of a junk journal because I love that. And it still gives me plenty of fun um, textures and materials and ephemera, but also some sturdy pages with good quality paper. So what I've got in this journal that's really interesting when you go uh, on holidays somewhere is that I have lots of pages started with uh, images, with texture, with text. And this one is the first spread that I've started really working on a little bit. But other than that, all my pages are blank pages or just I like to call them not so blank pages because a spread like this can just take me anywhere. And when I want to journal and I don't have a lot of time to myself, I really love this idea of having starting points and just uh, pages that are not completely blank like this one, for instance. All right, now let's take a look at what's inside the journal around here, around the end. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is a piece of parchment paper. And this comes in really handy because it allows you to Place it in between pages that are not fully dry. And this way you can take your journal with you even if your spread needs to dry some more. So for instance, if you go to some inspiring site and you want to sketch outdoors or maybe you want to um, just have it with you in case inspiration strikes, just um, keep this piece of parchment paper and it's going to prevent your pages from sticking together. At the end of my journal, I also have a sort of uh, envelope um, pocket here, and I have stuffed it with materials for collage. Plenty, plenty, plenty of things. So these come straight from my art journaling basket. So my art journaling basket is here and it's full of paper scraps, but of course I cannot take it with me. So I've just made a small selection of papers and images and in this little envelope, I have some cutout words. So lots of different things and I didn't spend too much time choosing them because I want to keep it very random so that when I get working on my journal, I can have lots of variety to, you know, find something to work with in the moment. So here I've got images, I've got um, interesting textures and marks. I've got some vintage ephemera with writing on it. Some more textures like book binders, cloth and tea bag. So 
some paper doily, tissue napkins with patterns. What matters here is really to have things that inspire you and to have a good variety because you don't know what you're going to want to create. And also at the moment, and especially in this journal, I'm very inspired by neutrals. So most of my papers are very neutrals. And then I'm going to show you what I've got for colorful supplies. All right, and here I have a few more papers and images that are bigger and don't really fit into my little pocket. So there's uh, some imagery, some text, handwritten text, more larger pieces of paper that can become a page in themselves inside the journal. And I love to create little flaps and pockets. Like here, for instance, it's like having a smaller page to work with. And here again, I love to have lots of little hiding places in my journal. All right, now that's it for the journal itself. And now let me show you the rest of the art supplies I'm taking with me. So first I was telling you about colors because most of the papers I've got are fairly neutral. And also the pens and pencils that I've got are also neutral, but here I have got some color. So this is an old little wallet and it's fun and it's very handy because it has some compartments that allow me to separate my supplies. So here on that side, I've got some water soluble crayons and I've chosen colors that I love to work with at the moment, plus some neutral. So I've got some turquoise, some salmon pink and yellow ochre for a pop of bright uh, light and some neutrals, raw umber. This one is probably, I don't know, it must be raw sienna or something, very rusty color, some light gray, some paints gray. And it's really good to take with you only a limited palette because this is going to help you get going and get creating. Now, the reason that I'm taking these crayons with me is that they allow me to create instant paint. And this way I don't need to take any paint tubes with me. So here, for instance, let's say I want some blue paint. I'm going to take some matte medium and I have a little bottle to take with me. And this is going to create instant paint. So of course I can do it in a palette. I'm not taking a palette with me because I know that wherever I go, I will find some plates or things to use, you know. But these crayons are really handy to allow you to have all the colors you want, but without uh, taking much space. So these ones are water soluble and these ones are not water soluble. They're permanent. So that's the main difference. And I've taken mostly the same colors and some black and some white. In my little wallet, I also have some stamping textures and stenciling. So anything that's small enough, like this is a piece of textured wallpaper that I like to use as a stamp, a little piece of bubble wrap and this fun little stencil. And they don't take up much space and they have very simple shapes and textures that I can use um, many, many times. You don't want to take anything too specific just things that you can use again and again. And there are lots more little compartments that I can use to add uh, more imagery if I want to, or maybe if I find some nice leaves to dry and things like that, I can put them inside my little wallet. So aside from the crayons, I also have some pens and pencils. This paint marker by Molotov is very handy because it has two tips, a fine tip and a bigger tip. I always love to have a white paint marker with me because it allows me to write, to draw, to create white highlights. It's really paint in a pen. And because I use white a lot, this is really, really handy. So that's for white. And I also have a black one, a black Posca with a fine tip. This is really great to journal, to um, create shadows. I use it a lot. I have some Pit Artist pens in my favorite brown colors. And this one has a fine tip. Great for journaling, sketching. And this one has uh, a brush tip. So I don't need any more pens than that. 
and for pencils. Um, indulging a little bit here because I really don't need to take both. This is a graphite water soluble and this is uh, a black stabilo water soluble. So they are very similar, but this one is much darker and this one is more um, grayish. But I love them both, so I'm taking them with me. And this is a mechanical pencil, any kind of regular pencil would do, but I love that I don't have to sharpen it, even though I also have a pencil sharpener just for those two here. Now I've shown you before this bottle of matte medium and it's really great to have a small bottle that you can refill. I also have one of white acrylic paint. So this is heavy body paint and this is also a bottle that I can refill. And I love to have those small bottles. They are great for my travel kit, but they're also great to have on my Arjunling table, which is a smaller table in my studio. And lastly, I also have a tube of one of my favorite paints. And this is in the same kind of color as some of my crayons here, but um, I love the texture of heavy body paint. And so I thought, I'm just going to take one paint tube with me. And if I'm going to take just one, it's going to be this light portrait paint that I use a lot. And here are some painting tools. So I'm taking with me a silicone tool like this, which is great for spreading paint and making marks. A filbert brush. Um, in the past, I've used some flat brushes like this one in my travel kit, but uh, I'm loving the filbert brushes more and more. They're just the same, just as easy to use for collage, but at the same time, I love the rounded tip. And I've got a round brush and my trusty needle tool that I use all the time to scratch into the paint, write into the paint and um, distress some materials. So this is really something that I love. Although this is not something I take with me when I travel by plane because I'm not sure you're allowed to have that kind of thing in a plane. And here is a rag and it's very handy to wrap my tools in it. And this way I can put everything away in my little pouch. Now I think there's one thing I didn't show you and these are washi tapes. These are really fun for collage, but also to stick anything uh, very quickly in your journal and to attach additional pages. For instance, let's say I want to make a page about uh, bugs and butterflies and I have this dictionary page and I can just stick it with my washi tape into my journal. Usually when I'm at home, I would use masking tape, but uh, my roll of masking tape is big and so it's not um, great to take with me because it doesn't fit into my little pouch. All right, and now the last thing that doesn't fit into my little pouch but that I usually have around when we are on vacation is a magazine. So for instance, this one here is one I bought last year and the summer holidays are usually the only time in the year when I buy one or two magazines. And I love the Homes magazine like this because they have lots of, you know, patterns, florals, and something that I use a lot in my journals are doors and windows. So I always find plenty of these in this kind of magazine. Plus they're so pretty. Now, this is mostly dry, but not fully. So I'm going to use my little piece of parchment paper here in between my pages and let's put everything back. All right, everything fits and I just can't wait to get playing. I hope you found this inspiring and useful and I would love to know what you put in your own little travel kit. Have fun and let's keep creating!